Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I'll uh, start with a discussion of common base amplifiers. So since we have already discussed common gate amplifiers, so I thought uh, it's it's very easy now to understand uh, the BJT counterpart of the common gate, which is common base amplifiers. So first, uh, I mean, since we have analyzed the common gate extensively, uh, I'll just uh, very briefly. I mean, the analysis is very similar to a common gate configuration and we will see what are the minor differences between the two uh, common base and common gate configurations. Again, I will discuss about gain, both the unloaded and the loaded gain and the input resistance and output resistance as you vary the both the source and the load resistances. Okay, So, first we will talk about the gain. So, now first we will find the intrinsic gain or the unloaded gain of the common gate amplifier. So, the intrinsic gain since we are direct, directly driving at the input, if you remember the small signal model of a BJT, it's exactly same as the small signal model of a MOSFET. Okay, it, this is the three terminals: so base, emitter, and connector. So you can replace it as think of it as gate, drain, and source. It's exactly similar except the term R pi, which is the base to emitter. There is a finite resistance. In case of a MOSFET, you can treat a MOSFET as a BJT with R pi equal to infinity. So, what it means is the beta you can assume to be infinity. When your beta is infinity, there will be no base current drawn. Even for a zero base current, you can still have a finite collector current. So, that is what this uh, beta equal to infinity means. And in that case, your MOSFET's model approaches that of a BJT. Okay, uh, sorry, a BJT's model approaches that of a MOSFET when your R pi is infinity. So, what does this R pi, R pi is the only difference. So, if for finite R pi, what difference does it cause is that is what we are going to see in this lecture. So, first since we are driving the input voltage directly at the emitter. So, you will actually have a current GMVI flowing through the MOSFET uh, to the BJT from emitter to collector. Okay, I am ignoring the factor alpha, it is almost same. I can read it as almost same. Okay, and there is R naught present across the BJT. Okay. So, you can actually visualize this current as two parts. There is a fraction of current flowing through the base. You will actually see that part of the current flows through the base and remaining part of it enters the collector. So, if I assume that same current flows nearly from the input to the output, again collector current cannot flow here. Uh, the current here at the output is 0. So, the collector current will loop around. Okay. So, using that we can very easily show the gain is 1 plus gm r naught into v i that is gain is 1 plus gm r naught. So, the you have a current which is the value of the current is gm into v i. So, that will be your collector current in a BJT. Okay. So, uh, that is the current that is going to flow through the collector gm into v i and that current will loop around the resistance r naught because it does not have a path it does not have a path on the other side to flow. So, if it is gm v i is the current here it will loop back here okay and your input is applied across base and emitter and base so the voltage gain is going to be 1 plus gm or not which is very similar to uh, the voltage gain of a common gate configuration so unloaded voltage gain that is when rs is zero and rl is infinity is the same now the difference comes when we start loading it so first i'll load only the load resistance or sorry only the source resistance so i'll include the source resistance and try computing the gain in this case. Now, when I just load the source, I mean, uh, load the source part, source side of the amplifier, RL is infinity here. Now, if you observe this amplifier, uh, the common gate amplifier, so we'll first just take the common gate structure alone, and then, you know, and then look at this structure, the common gate structure alone. Okay. So, in this when you look into the emitter part with the collector open, I have now opened the collector terminal and I am just looking into the emitter. There is R naught also present. As I look into the collector, the current drawn from the input, input, input is applied across base and emitter. Okay. So, if you look at a BJT, the input is applied across the base and emitter and the current flowing through the collector is actually GMVI. Okay. You should understand that there are two components for current here. So, when I applied the voltage V i here, I am trying to find the impedance as you see into the emitter when your collector is open. 
okay for small signal ac values the collector is open it's it's open circuit only for ac not for dc now at this point when i apply vi here at here there is the current flowing is going to be the emitter current out of which a fraction of it returns back to the source i mean it's returns to the ground so the, that is nothing but ib okay ic flows through this and ic is equal to gmvi so that's the part of current which is which 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 i mean that's the part of current which actually flows through r not which returns back to the input okay but if you look at the which returns back to the input so meaning input uh, there there is no ic amount of current so if you look at the current drawn from the input from here it draws ie amount of current but it returns back ic so the effective current drawn from the supply is just from the input source is just ib and this vi is appearing across base and emitter so vi by ib will simply be r pi okay so in case of a mosfet it was infinity when you looked into the gate terminal when you have open circuited the drain in case of a bipolar junction transistor when you open circuit the collector terminal the looking in input impedance is actually r pi i'll write it as rn which is r pi we get a finite value of input resistance so similarly we'll write another result we'll try to find what happens when i actually look into the source uh, i mean the collector terminal or the drain terminal of a mosfet we'll try to see what happens in this case now i'm trying to look into the collector terminal and if you you should now understand that a similar process exists here as well you know as soon as you apply a voltage source there is a path for current from here to here and because of which some current flows through this but you should understand that since this current is zero no current is flowing at the output the current drawn at the input should also be zero okay but this is what you need to be careful about so what you need to do is that in a bjt there is an r pi which you have to take into consideration see i can always do a small signal or an intuitive anal i mean uh, analysis but i mean looking at it as emitter and collector currents helps a lot in bjts so which is why i am just spending some time on this so the reason for analyzing bjts is that when we analyze high frequency circuits high frequency analysis of mos circuits uh, it becomes easier you can apply a lot more uh, uh, very interesting results that you encounter in bjts in mosfets okay so you here we applied vi here this is ground when i apply vi here so there is an initial current drawn through or not a current is flowing through or not now the path for current because you even if you wiggle collector there is no current that's going to be caused because of this in this direction because of the voltage source what's happening in the circuit is due to r not there is a feedback at the input at the base emitter because of which there will be a current and that will you know flow in this direction so that's what we'll be seeing so we'll see what happens to the circuit in a bj in a, i'll just quickly to refresh your memory what happened in mosfet was that when there was an r not here we directly said that when you apply vi here uh, the entire current flows through or not whatever current and that current returns back here completely returns back okay whatever current is flowing here it returns back completely right because the drain and source current this is is and id are exactly same so whatever current enters here comes out here but in a bjt the current entering here if you see it's actually emitter current okay the current that's going to come out here is collector current only a fraction of it is going to return back okay so which means some part of is not is not still returning back okay which means it is actually flowing through ground so it will actually flow through ground so the ground i'll i'll assume ground as a common terminal so part of the current flows through r not and through the bjt through the base and ground and the loop is complete so the instant previously when you looked at a mos based circuit the current that was drawn from the input was zero because any current that was flowing through r not from which was actually from uh, derived from the input was fully returned back okay was fully returned back because there was no other path for the current but now there is a path for the current so now you can find it i'll just give the direct result so the looking in impedance actually it has two components one by gm and r pi so what exactly happens is that you can actually if you're if you're uh, you can analyze the same problem in an intuitive way so you can analyze it this way you can assume that there is a resistance since i'll ground the base okay 
there is a resistance r pi between emitter to emitter to ground and you have a resistance r not between collector and emitter and now you are looking here this is the r not you are trying to find and we have already done this this is like a common base configuration so i have removed r pi now i have removed r pi from the bjt model and replaced it here okay i am just trying to solve it intuitively so you can treat this bjt as a mosfet now i have just replaced r pi here at this point okay so the same results apply for a mosfet so for a mosfet it was r not plus rs into 1 plus gm r not okay that was the result for mosfet where rs was a source resistance now in place of rs you actually have r pi okay so the result gets multiplied like this and this result can be approximated to gm r not r pi again we know gm into r pi is beta so we can approximate this to beta times r not so this is the maximum input imp output impedance that you can get out of a single common so the common gate a common base configuration in a mosfet it was infinity if you open circuited the drain if you open circuited the emitter or the source in the mosfet the looking in impedance into the drain was infinity but for a bjt it is finite because of the presence of r pi again i told you intuitively where does this current flow it actually flows through the base so that's the current which is actually creating a finite input finite output impedance so that's the main difference between bjt and mosfet now keeping these two points in mind okay we can now very very quickly say that so as i said we can actually treat a mosfet and bjt very similar except the fact that there is an r pi okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to separate r pi here from the mosfet bjt model i'm going to remove r pi then this is purely going to be the model for a mosfet the mod i mean i've drawn the symbol of a bjt so i, I hope you're not confused here what i mean is i'm just trying to look at it intuitively the small signal model is like this so this is gm vb or v pi i can call it and this is r not now what i'm trying to say is i'll remove r not here okay and replace it here so r r pi here and now from here when you look at this model as it is this looks like the model of a mosfet okay so this looks like a model of a mosfet so now this is your uh, base emitter and collector terminals and if here if you see that there is no current i mean if you ignore r pi if you ignore r pi from this side uh, between base and emitter it looks like an open circuit i have later added r pi in parallel to it so i'm just trying to give an intuitive comparisons to mosfet here now if you are trying to find let's say i connect a load resistance rl here input resistance of a common base configuration we have already derived this result for a bj for a mosfets so if i'm looking at this node it's going to be rl plus r not by 1 plus gm r not so i have already given the intuitions for this in the previous lectures how do you get that you can go through that this will simply appear in parallel with r pi that's it so if you remember previously we said that in a common gate configuration when rl is infinity the input resistance will also be infinity so i am going to vary rl from 0 if rl is 0 it's approximately 1 by gm and then it linearly increases to infinity that's what i said in the previous lecture but what happens when you actually have rl i mean um, uh, for in case of a bjt which has a finite r pi is that instead of saturating the infinity it's eventually going to go to r pi this is going to be r pi now you should compare 1 by gm gm into r pi is 100 sorry it's beta okay i'm sorry i just said a typical value of beta we had is 100 so gm into r pi is beta so your resistance value goes from 1 by gm to r pi so there is almost a if you see the difference there is almost a beta fold increase in resistance so beta dictates your uh, resistance value i mean the mosfets the bjt is uh, input impedance r pi actually okay so r pi can be seen as beta by gm so if for a finite gm if beta is infinity then uh, because if you restrict your current your gm is fixed for a bjt for a G, for a bjt your gm is simply icq upon bt the thermal voltage now if r pi even though gm for a finite current gm is finite r pi can still be infinity if your beta is infinity 
So that's what I'm trying to say here. So if a beta is infinity, then this graph will follow that of the MOSFET. Okay. So yeah, so that's what I'm. Uh, that's what we can see about the input resistance. The input resistance has a finite limit. It's R pi. So it it cannot grow indefinitely like a MOSFET. Similarly, for an output resistance, in a bipolar junction, in a bipolar junction common base configuration. So now I'm going to load it with R S here. Now, if you are asked to find what is R out from here, if you see again, I'll separate out R pi here. I'll include R pi here. So now this this part of the circuit behaves like exactly the model is same as a MOSFET. Okay, the model is exactly same as a MOSFET. Now the R out is going to be R naught plus. Now, if you see R s and R pi are in parallel, so it will be R s parallel R pi into one plus G m R naught. Okay. Now this result again, when R s is zero, anyway this term is going to be zero. It's going to start from R naught. When R s is zero, its output resistance is simply going to be R naught. Now, as I keep increasing R s, as I keep increasing R s, eventually. In the in case of I'll draw it for a common gate configuration, for a common gate configuration, it kept on increasing linearly with R s to infinity eventually. But for a common base configuration, because of finite R pi here, this won't let R s parallel R pi grow to infinity. No, R s parallel R pi will eventually reach R pi when R s becomes infinity. So then we will reach a limiting value. Okay, and the limiting value will be R naught. Plus R pi into one plus G M R naught. Okay, so this is the limiting value it will reach. Okay, so you can see that just to give you a comparison. So which is why uh, I wrote it in terms of beta. If this is R naught, you can actually write this result approximately. I we discussed some time back that it is approximately equal to beta times R naught. Okay, I can ignore uh, R naught plus R pi terms. And take consider only G M R not into beta into R pi. You will get that as beta times R not. So again, if you see the initial input output resistance starts from R not and increases nearly beta times. Finally, it becomes beta times R not. So that's why this current factor is very important in the BJT. It almost increases by beta times eventually. Okay. So that's it about input and output resistance for a common base amplifier. So I'll now come back to the loaded gain of a common common base amplifier. Now I'll first load the input side, so I'm going to apply R S here, and we'll assume analyze it with a finite R naught. So when you have a finite R naught, R L is infinity. The input impedance looking here, the input impedance looking here is for a B, for a MOSFET it is infinity because drain is open, no current, so therefore there is no current from the input as well. But as we discussed, you can treat B J T, especially it's very useful when you treat B J T as a You just separate out the R pi mod R pi from it, then this part can be treated like a small. Uh, it's it's equivalent to a MOSFET. This device, if you separate out R pi from so, this is true only for small signals. Okay, in active region and all that. Okay, if you separate out R pi from the model, then you get this. This is same as MOSFET. So I can say the input impedance looking here is infinity. Okay, now this part the gain is going to be R pi by R pi plus R S. So there is a loading factor. It's reducing the gain in the, that is seen at the emitter terminal. Then you have to multiply it by the intrinsic gain, which is one plus G M R naught, or the unloaded gain, which is one plus G M R naught. Now, if you see previously, if you recollect for for a MOSFET, the when you are just loaded on the source side and not on the load side, your gain was same as the intrinsic gain, which was one plus G M R naught. But now, if you see because of the finite input resistance R pi, you are getting this reduction, slightly reduced value. For a BJT, and similarly, we can describe the gain when both when R S is not present and only R L is present. Okay, when R S is not present and only R L is present, then the again you can apply the same procedure as I said. Uh, This this uh, I mean this circuit can be analyzed in uh, many different ways. 
So since you are driving this node with a voltage source directly, even though let's say I connect R pi here, R pi doesn't come into the picture of gain. Okay, so the gain will simply be one plus G M R naught into R L by R L plus R naught. So again, you can see how it was done for a common gate configuration. It's very similar to that. Okay, so it's no different when you load only on the load side and not on the source side. It doesn't make any difference because on the source side, the only difference for a common base configuration and common gate configuration is at the source end. Okay, because of the presence of R pi. But since I'm directly driving with the voltage source, R pi doesn't matter anymore. Okay, the input seen at the emitter will be independent of what the value of R pi is. So therefore, the gain will be same as that for a common gate configuration. If you recall, you can go through the previous lectures. I've just drawn the same structure for a common gate amplifier. The gain is exactly the same. Now, finally, we will load on both sides of the common gate amplifier. So we will add a load resistor and a source resistor. So this is R naught. We will add a load resistor RL and a source resistance RS. Okay. Now, if you look at this circuit, first we will uh, do a step by step analysis. The expression is can be pretty complicated here because your input resistance is going to be R pi in parallel with whatever we have for RL. So, RL plus R naught and all that. So, I can directly do one thing. So, we can use the fact that the current that is going to flow through this node, the current which is going to flow through this node and the current which is actually going to come out of this will not be exactly same because a part of it is actually going through going to return back because whatever is flowing through the base gets returned back. So to capture that I can actually first include R pi here. Okay. So in fact the Rn captures everything. I mean uh, once you once you include Rn, Rn captures uh, everything and a part of the current, the current that is going to come out here you will you'll have to remove the current that is flowing through R pi. Okay, so that's why I said the analysis is pretty complicated. But I'll write the general expression for this right now and leave it as it is. Okay, it's pretty, it becomes pretty messy, the expressions and all that. So instead, we can directly just leave it uh, with a general term which is Rn by Rn plus Rs. That's the voltage at this point. And we know the expression for Rn when you have Rl, it will be R pi in parallel with Rl plus R naught by 1 plus Gm R naught. Again, you can go through the previous lectures. I've explained very clearly how this comes even intuitively. You don't need to re remember this expression. Then we are at this point now at the input. So say I'll, I'll call it V in from input to this node. Okay. Again, we know the gain is simply 1 plus Gm R naught into Rl by Rl plus R naught. Okay. So this is the expression your Rn is different now right now your Rn actually contains a term uh, R pi in parallel with the normal load resistance when you compare it with the common gate configuration. So that's the only difference for this uh, between these two amplifiers. Okay. So the gain is obviously going to be less so this factor remains the same both for BJT and MOSFET this factor when I say BJT and MOSFET I'm comparing common gate stages and common base stages now. This term this part of it remains the same but this term Rn is going to be lowered because it's something else is coming in parallel with it. So it's going to be lower than a common gate configuration for the same values of RL, R0 and GM and all that. So your gain will be the loaded gain will be slightly smaller. Okay, depending on the value of R pi, of course. Okay, so it depends on the value of R pi, it will be smaller than. Uh, so I can say A loaded gain. So I'll call it AL as the loaded gain for common base configuration is going to be less than a l for common gate configuration i mean provided everything is matched gm is matched and all that everything else is matched okay so that's uh, that's it about common base configurations just one more point uh, which i forgot to talk about when i was speaking about uh, common uh, uh, gate configuration is that when we have a common gate configuration i have uh, I have not derived the expressions for uh, common gate configuration when you have body effect. Okay. So in fact, every expression that we have derived 
remains exactly the same because you are you are assuming your bulk is also at ground so any voltage you have you have a vsg here that is same as vsb so you will have a current flowing from drain to source which is gm vgs so now it's going to be gm plus gmb okay into vgs will be the current that's going to flow or you can write since vg and vb are at ground i can simply say vs will actually be flowing from source to drain because source is at higher potential here so it will flow from source to drain so that's the only difference everything else every expression you just you just have to replace gm by gm plus gmb in common gate configurations okay everything else remains the same the only difference is you have to just replace your gm with gm plus gmb so that's it about common gate and common base configurations i think we have done a fairly good treatment for this uh, for common gate especially and common base is a trivial, simple a trivial extension of uh, common gate configuration with just an addition of rpi so in the next lecture i'll start with the discussion of uh, the source follower or voltage buffer or uh, common drain configuration